Welcome everyone to week five, part one of heat and thermodynamics. Last week, we kind of went through part one and part two, where we looked at the different steps of thermal equilibrium when we put two different, two or more objects together um, and they come to a final temperature within a system. We gain heat, we lose heat. Um, that was what we dealt with last week. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and then we went through and we actually solved for that final temperature. So this week, it's very similar, except for now we're going to go with the phase change. So what happens when we put like a, a, a piece of ice in like lemonade? What happens to that? We go through a phase change and then they reach that final equilibrium temperature. Um, a couple of things just remember when we have thermal equilibrium, this is a review, it's when we have two or more objects that have different temperatures, they're going to transfer heat until there is no difference in temperature, and we're going to have equal amounts of heat are gained and lost, so we're going to be using the sum of all my Q's is equal to zero, and we're going to be um, adding all those up. So last week we dealt with this when we had no phase change. Now what this week is, we're going to be looking at, hey, what happens when we do have a phase change? So what happens when we have a phase change? Well, we have to deal with both of these Q's are equal to MC delta T, and we have to deal with the plus or minus M times L. So remember with plus or minus, we have to say, is heat added um, or is heat being removed? Is it the plus or is it the minus? So we're going to have to deal with both. So we have a heat Oh, something heats up, we get a phase change, we get another heating up, but we get a, a cooling down. Okay, so that's that's the same idea. Um, nothing's really much different. So this is a, almost identical to last week's, um, but it's just we're going to draw a map that has it with the phase change. So we start by adding the max temp of the system on the y-axis. So we go over here and we can say max temp. Then we go through and we add the minimum temperature also on the y-axis so we can add our minimum temp over here because remember this is temp or this is Q. Um, and then we have to ask ourselves does a phase change occur between these, these temps? And if so we're going to draw a, a dotted line or we could say a dashed line, right? So we're going to have a phase change that's going to occur, say, right there. And then we can say, hey, this is going to be the phase change. Now, the thing we have to be asking ourselves is we have to say, is this LF or is it the LV? Is it going through the latent heat of, of vaporization or latent heat of fusion? Is it solid to liquid? liquid to solid or is it liquid to gas gas to liquid okay so you got to kind of we got to talk about that briefly so then we're going to add a, a dot we're going to add a dot at the initial temperature of each object okay so those are my initial temperatures at each object then we're going to go through and we're going to add a dotted line and label it TF. So somewhere in here, we're going to have the temperature in which they, they meet at. Um, and then lastly, oops, I used orange. What happened? I used uh, dark green, I guess. Purple. Purple it is. Um, then we're going to draw your uh, lines with arrows to determine the number of cues of the system. So we start here and we hit that phase change. That's going to be my Q1. Then we're going to have our phase change occurs. That's going to be a Q2. Then we are going to have another temperature change. That's my Q3. And that's where that one's going to stop. But then we have this other substance that's going to come down. And then that's going to be our Q4. So that's what our map's going to look like. Um, they're going to meet right here at this final temperature. And that's what we're going to be solving for. Now for these, we're going to make the assumption that they will always get through the phase change. Um, but realistically, what can happen is they can stall out right here. right? If I take uh, a bunch of ice and put it in my glass of lemonade, my ice heats up, and then some of my ice melts, but the rest of my ice is going to stay right here. Now, if this was my lemonade, my lemonade would all come all the way down here, and it would also meet right here at this phase change. 
But we're always going to get through that. But realize in, in real life, we can actually stall out at that phase change. And that's what happens whenever we put like ice in our water or soda or whatever. Okay, so just this real quick. Uh, how do we know whether we are going to be a sum of all my cues is equal to zero or a question mark? If it's one object, it's a question mark. If it's two objects, it's an equal to zero. Okay, so this is, it's equal to one. Um, and when we are doing this, we're going to be solving for the question mark. Right, how much heat was gained, how much heat was lost. That was when it was for one object. That was one object. But when it's for two objects, then what we're doing is we're going to go... The sum of all my Q's is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus however many we have. So this is just, we're talking phase changes again. So just remember we have latent heats of fusion and vaporization. These are for references to determine is it the LF or the LV and it's really what phase change we're going through. But then we also have to make the choices. Is it going to be positive or negative? Is it the plus or is it the minus? So just kind of keep those things. Are we adding heat um, when we melt or evaporate? Or are we freezing or are we removing heat when we freeze or we condense things? So let's get to them. So what we're dealing with is we have a piece of ice. Well, we have ice at negative 20 degrees. And we have water at 20 degrees. So when we draw these pictures, we're drawing maps, and that's really all this part is. We're going to draw a map and identify cues, much like we did for part one of last week. And when you take this week's quiz, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to take a picture, you're going to draw these maps, take a picture, and upload it. Simple as that. So we have our T versus Q. We are going to go through and we're going to add our maximum temperature and our minimum temperature. So we have negative 20 and we have 20. We are going to go through and say, hey, does a phase change occur um, between these temperatures? And the answer is yes, it does. We get a phase change that occurs at zero degrees. That's our phase change. And then that is the latent heat of fusion. That's the, the, the solid to liquid or liquid to solid. And then we'll have to go through and we're going to have to figure out what happens. Does the, does the water get below and uh, solidify, or does the ice melt? Now, if you look at the amount of ice versus the amount of water, there's more water than there is ice. So we're going to get through that phase change. So just realize that. Um, so then we got to go through, and they're going to meet somewhere over there. So we're going to have a final temperature. And then what's going to happen is we have to add our initial dots of negative 20 and 20. And then we go through and we say, well, there's a Q1. That was a temperature change. Then we get a Q2 where we get a phase change to occur. Then we get a Q3. And that's for the ice. So what happens to our ice? Our ice heats up. Our ice melts. Our ice water, the water that is now in liquid form. So this is liquid water. This is now going to heat up. So when we talk about specific heats, this would be 4,186. That's not this part. That's the next part. Um, but that's what it is. It's liquid water, so we have to use that. And then lastly, the 20-degree water that we start with is going to cool down. So we end up with four Qs, and that's my map. Okay, but this is latent heat of fusion, and that's important for us to start to identify. Is it latent heat of fusion or vaporization? Let's try the next one. So we start with... 3.5 kilograms of aluminum at 220 degrees, and we have 1.5 kilograms of 80 degree water. So what's going to happen if we have really hot aluminum, and we throw really hot aluminum in water that's near the boiling point? The water's going to boil. We're going to assume that the water evaporates. Right? So we're going to start T, Q, maximum temperature, Minimum temperature. Does a phase change of water occur? Yes, a phase change of water occurs at 100 degrees. And we have to say, well, is that is that the latent heat of fusion or vaporization? Well, 100 degrees vaporization is going to occur. So there's going to be latent heat of vaporization. And then we can go through and say, well, somewhere in between they're going to have a phase change. Now you could say, how do you know it's going to be past 
um, the boiling point. Well, I'm just kind of looking. I have more aluminum than I have water. Um, it's cl it's quite a bit above the boiling point um, where this is relatively close. So I'm making that assumption that it's going to go through. So for t this time, we're just we're going with it. We're going to make prediction number Qs. Um, the next part, we'll actually be doing the calculations. Um, and then f last, we are going, well, not last step, I guess. We have to add dots for my initial temperatures. We have 3.5 kilograms started at um, two, 220, and then this one starts at 80. So then when we go through, we can then say, well, what happens when my, my water, because I put really hot aluminum in there, is my, my water is going to heat up. Then because I put really hot water aluminum in there, my water is going to boil. Then it's going to evaporate. And then once that water is evaporated, we're going to make the assumption that that's, that water vapor is going to continue to, to heat up. Okay, so we're going to get a Q3. Now that gets a little tricky, but for, this, for the sake of this, this is what we're going to say. And then what happens is that piece of aluminum is going to cool down. So we end up with, oops, we have a total of four Qs. Okay, let's have you try this one. A 3.5 kilogram piece of aluminum at negative 220 degrees is placed in 1.5 kilograms of 20 degree water. Draw a map. So just for the record, really, really cold aluminum, room temperature water. If we put a bunch of really cold aluminum into water, we're going to assume that we're going to freeze the water. Okay, so hit pause, draw the map, and then identify how many cubes there are. Okay, so hopefully you hit pause, and this is what your map should look something like. We should say, hey, there, we started at 20, and negative 20, uh, 220, we had our minimum and maximums. Is there a phase change? Yeah, water is going to freeze at that that um, zero degree mark. And just for the record, that's going to be latent heat of fusion is what that's going to be. Now, in this case, we would also say this is going to be a negative because we're losing, right? So we're going to have a negative latent heat of fusion. So when we say plus or minus, this is getting ahead to the next part, but it's going to be the minus piece. So... We have that. Um, we have a final temperature. We're calling that TF. We draw our initial dots, and then we say, hey, this cools down. Phase change cools down. This one heats up, and it heats at TF. So we have a grand total of four Qs once again. Okay? Um, just to kind of take a quick look again. Um, so when we talk about latent heat of fusion in number two, I went backwards and I apologize. This is going to be a positive latent heat of fusion, right? Because we are adding heat. If we go back to this one, this is also going to be latent heat of fusion. This is also going to be a positive because we are gaining heat. Okay, so let's take a look at number four. 0 0.5 kilogram of ethanol at negative 130 degrees. Now this is ethanol, ethanol, and ethanol. Okay, so we are looking at ethanol down here. So 0 0.5 kilogram piece of ethanol at 130, negative 130 degrees Celsius is placed at one point in 1.5 kilograms of 6 degrees ethanol. Draw a map and how many cubes. So go ahead, hit pause, and then unpause it when you're done. So your map should look something like this. We have minimum temperature, negative 130, maximum temperature of 60. There is a phase change that occurs between that, and we are talking about ethanol. This is all ethanol right here. So because we are looking at ethanol, we have a phase change that occurs between there, and that's why I put this dashed line at 140. Now, we should also add that this is going to be latent heat of fusion, and then this is going to be the positive latent heat of fusion because we are adding heat. Um, somewhere in between, there is going to be a final temperature that the system is going to meet at, and then we get a temperature change, phase change, temperature change, temperature change, and we're meeting at TF. So when we're all done, we get a grand total of four cubes.